Isn't it everyone's dream to retire early, sail off into the sunset and lead a meaningful life filled with family, friends and health? Well, I'm still working on completing this fantasy. Hi, my name is Gregor Tarjan. In today's episode, I will guide you through a simple decision roadbook of how to find your ideal camera. This video will not describe individual boats or give you specific examples, but is more of a mental how-to roadbook. This guide is divided in three key stages. The dream, your focus, and the realization of it all. Let's start with the all-important dream. Without it, you have nothing. Some dream of retiring early or writing a book. But if you are one of us who dream about a boat, the following could be helpful. I can only encourage you to dream and push yourself to pursue a quest that you might have had since you were a kid. My first memories living in landlocked Vienna was all about adventures. Growing up watching Jacques Cousteau's diving movies, all I could think about were dangerous deep sea exploits, heroic mountain climbing and sailing around the world on my own boat. My recommendation is talk to sailors in a similar situation as yours. Not everyone wants to circumnavigate, but most wish for the ideal boat. For many the dream of owning a several hundred thousand dollar boat might seem unattainable. Even some medium-sized catamarans today cost more than your average home. So be realistic. There's the physical part and the financial. Plan around a part of your life where you are still healthy and able to operate a boat, either alone or with your partner. Maybe find a friend or a group and form a corporation that could own the boat together. I even saw owners offering their catamarans for long-term leases. There are many ways to attain a boat. Some save money, many sell their earthly possessions, and others wait for the retirement. I can only encourage you to skim the web, soak in as much information as you can. Read books on the subject and find out how others manage to afford the time and funds to do it. Definitely. Don't get discouraged by the financial sacrifice as you will later in this episode find out that it may not have to cost you a life saving. Catamarans, especially ones that you can live aboard, often cost so much that many get confused about the size, options and the features. You need to separate the emotional from the rational or else you will be overwhelmed and end up with a mediocre choice. Ask yourself what you actually want to do with your boat and which features are a must and which ones you can live without. The more accurate and realistic your objectives, the easier the selection process will be. Try to define your mission as accurately as possible. Adapt the choice of your multi-hull to the conditions and your planned sailing environment. Dig deep into your aspirations. Be honest to yourself and be open to compromises. If you want a quick coastal sailor, your requirements and budget may be totally different than if you want to take your family around the world. Maybe you can even consider the route and seasons that you want to circumnavigate. Even that aspect could influence your choice. Study weather patterns and the ideal seasons to negotiate the major oceans. Will it be mostly sailing with the prevailing winds? Then mini keels are fine. Do I want something sportier? And will I want a real close-winded catamaran? Then get a daggerboard or centerboard boat. Talk to your partner about what she wants. Remember, a happy partner is a good partner. Define the areas you want to sail in and think of the seasons. This will greatly influence your decision. Do you have aspirations to try to negotiate the Northwest Passage? Then maybe an aluminum hull boat will be the smartest. Maybe all you want to do is an offshore cruiser that will operate in temperate or mid-latitudes. Do I want to place the boat into charter management? Then maybe a four-cabin version with air conditioning is better than an owner's version. 
If you plan to do crew charters, a flybridge or forward cockpit could be as useful to increase the social areas. We just talked about many considerations of boat types that would suit your purpose. Think the same way about the options. You might not be able to afford all systems that you want. Start with the essentials and hierarchically work your way down the list. Just as you focused on the perfect boat, choose your options wisely and make compromises. We talked about the dream and focus, but now comes the most important part of actually pulling the trigger and doing it. Most of the rational groundwork of financing and timing has been done. You have defined where you want to sail, where you will haul and dock the boat, and even selected your major options. Now will be the part where you actually go out and shop for the perfect boat. There are of course several ways to go about doing this. You can either buy or use or new or even place your boat into a charter management program. All have advantages and drawbacks. A used boat will be slightly cheaper depending on the age, will have a bunch of options and might already be in a location that you might want to sail in. The downsides are that you will have no warranty and that your maintenance cost will be much higher. A new boat can be equipped exactly as you like with the layout and options that you choose, will have a full warranty and also be more attractive to sail for you and possible charter guests. Owning a charter boat may let you afford a boat sooner, but may be limited to the options that the charter company deems are necessary. It will also put a lot of abuse on your prized possession. Think about how you want to buy the boat. You can skim the multiple listings classified and the ads in the back of the magazines or hire a multi-hull broker to help you. Of course, the web is a powerful tool to narrow your search to the right candidates. Once you have selected some, the most important thing, especially on a pre-owned boat, is a good survey. Only work with certified multi-hull surveyors. A thorough inspection can often uncover hidden defects. Be aware, however, as I have often seen, that osmosis issues or stress cracks cannot be uncovered after it's too late. So especially when buying used, be very careful and use common sense. In conclusion, finding an ideal catamaran will mostly depend on your wish to realize your dream. It will rely on diligent preparation, your ability to project as accurately as possible your sailing goal and what features are important in your future boat. Since finances are a huge part in the selection process, a rational methodology will greatly help you whether you buy new or used. I will leave you with the wisdom of my friend and late multi hill designer Dick Newick. Studying under him has taught me much, but one thing always stuck. He said, you can only have two out of three things. A cheap boat, a fast boat, or a large boat. So keep this simple wisdom in mind and be willing to compromise. I hope that this episode offered some new insights and that you got some enjoyment of watching. A lot more information is in my books on catamarans. If you want to follow more episodes of our free 22-part mini-series as they become available, please make sure to subscribe to our Aero Yacht channel so you don't miss any. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the water in a catamaran.